I don't think any other scripture was so scary to me than this scripture that Jesus said, I never knew you depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I was like, but they said they did miracle in your name. They saved you, right? Like, why did Jesus say, I will say to them that day, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That scripture was so scary to me when it was preached in the religious sense as I was growing up. Honestly, it was really scary. And I was like, so what is the essence? I'm just being real with you. I was like, what is the essence of even following Christ, of accepting him into my life? If at the end of the day, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be the one that they will say, all this thing you did is nonsense. I never knew you. Let's go straight into this scripture that Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said to the disciples, he was part of his teaching on the mount. Then as he was rounding up, he said to them, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 22 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity. Who was Jesus talking about? Many will say, will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. You know, I healed the sick in your name. And I will say to you, I never knew you. Why did Jesus say this? And to whom was he referring to? What class of people was Jesus referring to in this scripture? The analogy I have, this is kind of like a weak analogy, is that a mango tree cannot be orange fruit. Now get it. A mango tree cannot be an orange fruit. And if a mango tree would be an orange fruit, the gardener or the owner can have the right to tell the mango tree, I never knew you. That was not the will. You were not supposed to be an orange fruit. You were supposed to be a mango fruit. Now, just keep that at the back of your mind because that will be beneficial as I try to explain this passage. Christ said, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. It is those that do the will of my father, which is there is a prescribed will of the father that we are meant to do. That Christ came to reveal for us to do. And those that miss out on that you actually miss out on being known by him. Because the thing is not just about you saying, I know God, I know God, I know God. It's about you asking yourself, does he know me? Another analogy I have to this, this one is kind of like a funny analogy. It's like somebody whom you know and the person does talk to you. When they go to meet other people, they profess to other people that you and them are in a relationship. Maybe you guys are dating or you have proposed to them and they go shout about it. It could be either sex, whether it's the male or the female. But this one person goes to other people and shout about how, you know, you guys have started a relationship, how much they know you and talk about all of these things. And when the day of reckoning comes, when somebody approaches you and be like, oh, how's your relationship with this person? And to you, you only know this person because you only talk to them casually. You people have never had a relational conversation. So at this point, you you kind of be surprised. I never knew about this. Like, seriously? In a relational sense, I never knew this person. Like, the person do talk to me, but I never knew this person. So now, when Jesus was talking about On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord. And then I will say to them, I never knew you. He's talking about the relationship angle. Because God knows everything, really. God is not like, oh, he's having amnesia. God has started forgetting things. No, it's like based on relationship. Does God know you? Or are you like this person who goes about sharing messages? You know, you could be an evangelist. You could be a pastor. Whatever rank or post you have you could just be a a, a normal member in the church a christian that doesn't even go to church whatever is your rank 
But then you, you let people know I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, but then you have no relationship with God himself and you. He doesn't know you. But you can even be telling other people how much you know him. Now, in the other angle that I asked myself a question regarding this was, the miracles that these people did, was it not from God? They said, we prophesied in your name. So was the prophecy in the name of Christ not true? We healed the sick in your name. Was the healing not true? So now I have like a few thoughts on this. First of it is that they used the name of Jesus and prophesied and healed the sick. God honored his name because his name is that powerful to do what is called to do. So it's very possible that someone, a minister, a pastor, an evangelist, a Christian can pray for the sick and tell the sick in the name of Jesus be healed and a miracle can happen because God decided to honor his name by the faith of that person that believes. Now that is number one. Number two is that God's gift is without repentance. God can decide to give someone the gift of being a powerful orator, a great preacher, a great teacher, a great evangelist that has persuasive words to bring people into the kingdom. And he said, I preached, I saved people, I brought them into the kingdom, but you that preached has done the work and has ended up not knowing God because you and God have no relationship. You that God has given the gift of healing people, you've gone ahead, you've done this healing, done this healing crusade and these miracles, and then you've come to the place that you and God have no relationship. He does not know you. It could be that, that's number two, which means that God, even though you've not had a close relationship with him, did not withdraw his gift because his gift is without repentance. He gave it and that is it. He's not going to withdraw his gift. He's not like a man, like if I were to give you a gift and then you acted like you don't know me. Honestly, it could get to a point that I'm fed up. I'm just like, give me a gift back. But then God is not like that. His gift are uh, without repentance. I know that's actually mean to say that I would do. But then, thirdly, it could be that this person that is doing these things in the name of God is using the name of God as a cover up. But then they are doing their magic or deceiving people with demonic powers. That could be the third thing. And this is just my deductions of saying, this could be the places where this person comes to say, I prophesied in your name, I healed the sick in your name, and all of that. And Christ said, no, me and you, I never knew you. So now, how could this be beneficial to you and me as I'm speaking today on this topic? Why did Jesus say, I would say to this person on that day, I never knew you. From the context of this scripture, the scripture talked about by their fruit, you shall know them. If you start from the previous verse, which is verse 20, verse 19 says, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit, you shall know them. Then it went to where Jesus said, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord. That's Matthew chapter 7, verse 20 said, by their fruit, you shall know them. So first of all, that's the context of where Jesus was coming from. And it's saying, you cannot say, like I, I mentioned about a mango tree cannot be an orange fruit. It's not. It cannot be. So the fruit you bear is what is used to recognize you. So now when it comes to God, you, if you're not bearing fruit to God, if you're not bearing the fruits that God desires you to bear, then he does not know you. You might display the gift. And now I want to talk in this area with the idea that the church promotes. The church promotes a lot about the gift of the spirit, the gift of miracle, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of prophecy, and all those gifts. Those gifts are good for the edification of the church. That is where it lies. But then when it comes to you, yourself, and God in a relationship, it is you bearing the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, it names them. But sometimes you realize that a lot of people have the gift of the Spirit and end up operating in the works of the flesh. 
with anger, with hatred, with strife, and all those things that is written in Galatians chapter 5 about the works of the flesh. And that is where God says, some would say to me, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. And I, and I would say to them, I never knew you. You were walking in the flesh. You are walking in iniquity. You workers of iniquity. You evil doers. It should be something that not kind of make you afraid, but make you aware. Draws your attention to say, this thing is beyond me performing to God. This thing is beyond what I can do to show off to people that I am a son of God. Because I don't need to prove a point to anybody that I am a child of God. I don't need to prove to anybody that I am a son of my father. As long as my father accepts me and knows that I am his son and he has not thrown me out, that is enough. I don't need to go prove to people who is my father and start arguing with people that is... No, if God is my father and I know that he's my father and he knows that I am his son, I don't need to prove to anybody by having some kind of, you know, gift to show off. But then I actually need to bear the fruit. Because even in the natural, the son will have the resemblance of the father. The son will actually bear the fruit of the parents, which is even in the way they talk, the way they walk, the way they look. Like there is just this thing about us as humans that you just pick from your parents, which is called, to me now, I could use the word fruit for it. And it's the same thing that God expects from you. God is a God of love. And he expects you to carry that love, peace, unity, kindness, patience, self-control, and everything that is written in Galatians chapter 5 about the fruit of the Spirit. And these fruit are cultivated and nurtured by you being planted in God, being planted in his word, being planted in obedience. And this is what will save you from just saving God for nothing. That after all your service, he will say, I don't know you. And it was all a performance and you're missing out. I don't think that pays. I don't think anybody wants to be there. I don't think anybody wants to experience that. And God forbid that you would experience that. So this is to tell you, it is the fruit of the spirit that benefits you personally, internally, and showcases you as the true child of God. A lot of people do walk in this gift of the Spirit and at the end of the day, their fruit doesn't tell that they are children of God. The pride they walk in doesn't show that they are walking with God. The anger in them does not show that God really knows them. Because this is where Jesus would say, I never knew you. You never allowed me to have an intimate time with you so that I would transform you. You were actually conforming to the world and allowing yourself to be turned to a celebrity instead of being humbled and allowing me to show forth my glory through you. This is something that, you know, I just feel like it should make us think deeper. It should make us reconsider how we work with God again. So I would use this point to actually tell you, don't be too much enamored when you see people walk in the gift of the Spirit. Don't be enamored by it. That's not the reason God gave it. God gave it to edify you as the body, as the church. So don't let it turn to a thing of you worshipping the person whom God has gifted. But worship God who gives the person the gift. Don't let, because God has used someone to work miracles, you are now worshipping the person that works the miracle. Because that person is not God. That person is a vessel used by God. Now, why am I saying this? Because a lot of people walk in this gift, but yet, if you worship them, their fruit are not showing the fruit of God. You might end up missing your way. Because when you worship them, whoever you worship, you tailor your life to that person. They become your God. So when you start worshiping them because, oh, you like the way God is using them, you like the way they perform. So now, you are following them step by step. It's so easy for you to fall into the trap of their lifestyle. It's so easy for you to fall into the trap of whatever iniquity they are in and feeling like because they are doing it and God is still using them powerfully, that is okay, that is a tick on. No, a lot of people that are being used powerfully will actually miss out on the grand day, on the great day. 
So it is for you to know if God is using you or if, if, you are, if your dream is, God, I want you to use me. First of all, seek grounding in the fruits. Let the fruit, the love. That's why Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13 that if, if you like prophesy and all of that speaking tongues like a, a sounding symbol, but if you don't have love, it's nothing. It's zero. Because at the end of the day, love will tell about kindness, selflessness, patience. So it means in love, you can find all the fruit of the spirit just coming alive. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you will be known by God because you have a working relationship with him. Thank you for watching. I am Uwem Akpan. See you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.